All right, so what's going on? Um, we're making more music with Claudia, so she's not singing uh, I said four songs so far. Oh, wow. Yeah. Nice. It's going well, pretty smooth. Good. Yeah, so um, you... I just visited my uh, therapy, therapist in his sort of a mansion. So okay. About seven kilometers from this place. Okay. Oh, is that who you posted a picture with earlier? Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. So I guess that uh, helps you a lot, right? Yeah, he became a really good friend. You know, I was in therapy seven years. I started like uh, 98. Right. Yeah. yeah. I hear her singing now. Yeah. She's <laughs> yeah. Real cool. Uh, yeah, I saw, saw you post stuff uh, actually yesterday about um, you wanting to give Stradivarius secrets away. People got all... <laughs> <laughs> got all worried and wondering what you're going to give away. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, a lot of production. I, I talked to a guy from Louisiana. Yeah. I talked to like 40 minutes and he was like really into it. Fucking specific. Like really? What, with, with which microphones, which positions, which effects, which uh, settings. You know, he has yeah. everything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, do you want do you want to let uh, people know where they could uh, contact you to do that if they want to know any? Just email me and you know send me a WhatsApp and I see what I can do. What's your email address? Tdolki at yahoo dot com. All right. Yeah. So if anybody wants to know some Stradivarius uh, production secrets, not uh, yeah. behind the scenes secrets. It's not really <laughs> secret because it's something I developed together with Mikko Carmela, who is now now mixing New Nightwish in Finnwood. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's been oh, very important. Nice. Yeah, we, me and him, like we sort of defined the power mill sound with episode in 96. Right, yeah. 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 You're going to have to show me some of those secrets. I could use some help. Well, <laughs> they're really basic stuff at the end of the day. You know? It's like if you record like a good quality signal, you don't have to do much to it in a mix. Right. Yeah. It's already there. So. Right. And I always, for example, with the guitars, I always record dry. I never use any effects. I only add in oh, the really? mix. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Everything is added in the mix. You record through an amp, or do you, like, plug in? Amp. Always an amp. Always an amp. All right. Always cool. an amp. Yeah, because yeah, you can tell, uh, you know, the difference between both, so. Well, definitely nowadays the plugins are very... I mean, I have a Universal Audio Arrow, and it has, it's like a Marshall... Yeah, but it's not the same like a real amp. No way. No, not at all. But they do have some really cool uh, uh, amps and stuff on those things. Exactly. They're, they're, it's really advanced, this is. But at the end of the day, nothing really can replace a prop, like proper amp with a nice mic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah definitely. All right, we're all getting a preview of uh, the new song. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so. Um, just, I just want to start a little bit, like uh, how you got um, into, you know, with uh, before you started Stradivarius, like you know, obviously you, you know your father and everything and all that yeah. stuff, and, and um, you know what really got you into wanting to play music. Well, my mother told me that I was three, was on dancing next to a radio, and she yeah. told me that I, I could already sing some Beatles songs when I was three. Right. And then I was five when I first when my was my first time. When I actually touched the guitar, my co- my cousin had a uh, 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 steel string. Okay. So I I like stroked the string and I could immediately like I picked up uh, the the strings like the the notes. Mm-hmm. I was seven when I got my first guitar as a Christmas present, and I could tune it because I remembered the lyric the the notes. Yeah, yeah. Dun, 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 dun. I remembered it. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But somehow very very natural. Did it? Yeah, cause I used to uh, play guitar. It was my first instrument. I, that's kind of almost everybody's first instrument. Their parents yeah, exactly. always give them a guitar, you know. Exactly. Uh-huh. Yeah. But uh, I had a shitty guitar, and it always fell apart. So I kind of just gave it up. <laughs> yeah, and I I'm... wish I didn't, because now you know I got into drums. But you know, when you have an idea and you head of a guitar chord you yeah. want to do, I can't do it. You know, I <laughs> I try, but right. Yeah, but that's how I started, and and then my father was always listening to. Like uh, Abba Beatles, Ura uh, Heap, you know, did he, at home. Did so, he play like, guitar too or anything? Or anything? No, horrible. It's like 
horrible <laughs> voice. He could not play anything like, completely. But he he so he really uh, uh, introduced me to to the, the music. Um, yeah. Heap, especially Heap. Right. And Purple, Deep Purple was also he listened to that. Oh wow. Yeah. What was your favorite uh, Beatles song? Yesterday, bro. Oh really? Okay. Uh huh. That's fucking cool. But I like every them. They are so great, you know. Yeah. It's like basic, like how do you write hit songs? You know, two right. or three minutes. Yeah. And I know. I, very yeah, nobody does that now. To, very often they go straight to chorus. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. By I me, mean, like, it goes straight to the chorus, man. Like, yeah. 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 You ever think of writing songs like that? Well, like hunting, I, hunting high and low starts with basically with a chorus. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah. And I like a lot Max Martin, this Swedish producer who did Britney Spears and Westlife and Backstreet Boys. Okay. And he did It's My Life. So he's like, dun, dun, do, 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 do. Oh, yeah. His theory is that one has to recognize the song within seven seconds. From the start, yeah. right? So there has to be a hook, right? Yeah, that's what right gets there. people in. Yeah, yeah. So that that's like, uh, but it's not really big, because in metal is different, you know? right? Yeah, in metal is different. Yeah, it is very different. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, oh crap! I'm I'm listening to her in the background. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's a really cool singer. She is very cool. You have to have her on the show. Yeah, sure. She would be happy to do it, yeah. Is she doing like a whole album with you or what? Yeah, whole album. So uh, every single song and everything. We we feel like we have like like 10 really cool songs. Yeah. Now, is this something separate from the Mike Viscero stuff? Yeah, it's completely different. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's more like, um, I actually don't know how it feels. We'll see. You got so much stuff going on, man. It's two to three projects. I, I really like to be busy at this point. It's like, yeah, I see that. That's what I do. Yeah. yeah. You notice that helps you too with like you know because you said you went to the uh, psychiatrist earlier. Does that that helps you definitely like, uh, playing the guitar and everything, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, he became a really good friend, and, and to have a good, I have like um, I don't have so many friends here, but the ones I have are very big guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Esa Sarin is like a very big non philosopher here. He used to do lectures for Nokia mm-hmm. for like 100,000 euros one, one like two hour lecture. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. yeah. Yeah, I was reading your book, um, the, you know, the first book that you put out. I was reading that a few weeks ago. Man, it, it just, I couldn't even imagine like the shit that you went through, you know, especially when, like, I saw the one part that was when you went to school and you saw your, you know, father and all that crap. Yeah. It, was, it was just, right. like, that's terrible. I couldn't even imagine. Yeah. But it fucking happens. So, you know, it's part of my history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't deny it. So it, no. it sort of made me who I am today. Um, um, I am very thankful for my daddy in this moment. But then again, you have to think, how, how the fuck can you be thankful for something like what happened? But you have to. Right. But at the same time, you can't, you can't force yourself to be thankful if you're not. Yeah. yeah. So I, I really went, especially in the therapy, I went through like a metamorphosis. Mm-hmm. You know, I sort of grew into this yeah. mindset, or heart set, because mind is always conditioned. I don't like the mind really. Mind is like a tool. It's like in a computer. It's like a, the central unit. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but the heart, we really feel it with the heart and, you know, mind yeah. and heart connection. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I couldn't even imagine, man. I, I just said, I, I just, it, you know, it was it hurt to read all that stuff that you know that happened, and, and then you saw all that stuff, and then yeah. Just, yeah, the stuff, the stuff like when I was in Berlin, there was this a guy from Iceland, Ingvar, Ingvar Thorsson. He's like a big film mogul who even this did stuff with David Bowie and things. Mm-hmm. And I, I was in the car with this guy, and I was a front seat. Right. He was behind me, and I felt like he's reading my mind. So I was thinking, I had a conscious thought. If you read my mind, knock me in the back twice. And in yeah, five, was... se- I, five seconds, I go, da, da, fuck. Yeah. It's really happening. Right. And then he left when we went back to the hotel and I was in the entrance with him. And he looked at me like this. And I, had, I saw black wings. Right. 
is back. It's fucking happened, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah I remember like he, reading he, that in the book. He, I'm he like, knew exactly that. He knew exactly what he was doing. Uh, yeah, he just, you know, he got kicks out of it somehow. <laughs> yeah. Where did that guy go? Because I, when I was reading it, said that he kind of just disappeared. You ever see him or talk to him ever again? Yeah, he's he. I have his WhatsApp. Uh, so he's okay. Uh, he's not doing stuff like that anymore. No, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I also I like to keep distance certain people, so I'm. You know, I was just talking to Lauri Porra yesterday in WhatsApp, and he's, he told me that he got the is okay with me, but he just wants to keep a little bit distance in this moment. Oh, really? Okay. And yeah, I, also, I saw you. Uh... I went, went down with the post as well, like, not so much fucking anymore. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Why? I think people love that. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, I felt like Lauri told me that maybe I should you know, cool, cool down, calm down a little bit for a while. So I did it. <laughs> it's okay, I think. So, you, know, yeah, you don't want to get all the snowflakes all, uh, you know, uh, pissed off at you. Yeah, I, I don't. I, I don't really <laughs> want it anymore. No, I don't, I don't need it. So, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, um, what did you have, like, any, any bands, like, before you were joined in uh, Stradivarius? Like, like, school bands and stuff like yeah. that? Yeah. So my first band was called Roadblock. Oh, okay. And that was in '82. And in this, actually, Tuomo Lassila, the the Swanner's drummer, he became he came and he was a, a vocalist huh? know, in the first first um, formation of Roadblock. Then I started singing, and then I had a, had a band called Thunder. Mm-hmm. And Thunder was pretty much like Rainbow Pastiches yeah. kind of band. And that's when I made like the first demo back in I think '84 or something. 83, okay. and I was, it was in 84 when I got a call from last year to join Sutherland and do a gig in Aalborg, yeah. uh, Denmark. And in this gig, my, my strata was stolen. Oh, jeez. On the backstage. So I came back with an empty case. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck, yeah. Because that was like, my mother bought me that when I was 14. Not oh, 12, wow. 13, 13. Wow. 79 anniversary, silver, Sarcaster. Wow. Yeah. That's what makes was, it worse. I, I, I was a lot into you know everybody like origins of my picking technique is it was Aldi Meola. What is that? I don't even know. Aldi that Meola. Is. Aldi Meola is like a, he's like he's, he's like a, you don't know Aldi Meola. Mm. Wow. Um, they had a, a live album called Friday Night in San Francisco. Paco De Lucia, John McLaughlin, and Aldi Meola, like three guys playing okay. acoustic guitars and really fucking fast. Wow. When I saw that, I decided I really want to be like that. So I started, I played when I was, let's say from when I was like 14 to uh, 19, I played every day, eight hours, eight wow. hours every day. Wow. It became sort of a routine. And when you do so many years, eight hours a day, you, you really develop very good technique. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, I used to play drums every single day. I probably did eight hours too a day. I'd come home from school and be playing until, you know, eight o'clock at night. Yeah. And, you know, you, you get to the point where, like, you could kind of do almost everything. Yeah. But but then when I gave up for, like, five years and I tried to start over again, it's like uh, I lost all the things that I, okay. you know, taught myself how to play. Right. So I, t- right. I totally get that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Were you playing similar music that you played in Stradivarius in those older bands, or it's like what kind of style well, was it? Roadblock was more like we did a lot of covers of Black Sabbath. Oh, okay. Black Sabbath, especially Black Sabbath, like yeah. Symptom of the Universe and stuff like that. Oh, really? Yeah. And Randy Rhodes became very important at that time. I was I really loved the Diary for Madman. How he did like three when he did solos. There was like three tracks. Pan, right. Yeah. One in the middle, like Strat. This for he had like flying V, v polka dot model, but he was he used a lot, right? Yeah, yeah, it's a signature uh, thing, exactly. Yeah, and Carrie Moore, okay. Carrie, Carrie was like Corridor's Power Victims of the Future. I saw him in Helsinki twice live oh, wow. in wow. House of Culture. Yeah. yeah, I know who he is, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, and yeah. Richie, yeah, so I was, I think. 30 when I had smoke on the water live made oh, wow. in Japan version. Wow. And I immediately wanted to have electric guitar after that. And yeah. the rest is history, I guess. 
Yeah, I think he he started up uh, with um, uh, Rainbow again, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, yeah. He's he's um he actually I think he lives not too far from where I live. He he lives somewhere around here. I think he's in Long Island. Yeah, yeah, that's where I am. That's cool. Yeah, he has sort of like a castle there. <laughs> yeah, that's what I hear. I haven't seen it. I don't know where it is, but uh, yeah. And then he always goes to the uh, Renaissance fairs that we have, uh, yeah, that they exactly. have upstate. Yeah. yeah, I never met him. Like they were here in July, and I I told yes if I can meet Richie, and he said, "No, sorry, but Richie wants. He really doesn't want to have anybody on backstage." Really? Yeah. Hmm, that's yeah, interesting. He said that he's very. Um, very um, like conscious of, of his life energy. He doesn't want. He no. doesn't, really doesn't want anybody there. <laughs> <laughs> well, for me, a couple of times, really, really close to so meet this guy. I know one day we will meet. Yeah. Because I, I know he knows. Who, I know he knows who I am. So yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. he does. Actually, my uh, my cousin he plays guitar and stuff like that. And um, I think Richie did a, a show not too long ago, maybe a couple of years ago, and he yeah. actually played with him. Cool. Yeah, he, yeah, I think he's a really cool guy. Probably he is. Yeah, yeah, I don't see why not. I, with Richie, I, I, I adapted a lot of his humor, the sarcastic stuff, you know. <laughs> well, he says fuck all the time, too? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He, he's really, really cool. I, I, I saw a lot of interviews in YouTube. But, really? Yeah. <laughs> Were you into his uh, Black Moors Night stuff? I was. I saw my daughter Nina, we met once. I think it was in Helsinki, one black moon night. Mm. Under the violet moon, I think. It was. Yeah, okay. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that stuff's all right. I'm not too much yeah. into that stuff. Yeah, yeah. I like that one song that uh, his wife did with uh, Halloween, the uh, Light the Universe song. Yeah, exactly. And that, yeah, it wasn't too bad. Yeah, exactly. All right. So um, after you did those, uh, those, you know, your high school bands and stuff, um, how did you get in, uh, to... Was was Stradivarius like was that the name of the band before you got with them or Yeah. It was Tuamolasi and the guitar player back 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 then, Stuff and Strowman. They came up with this. They were like fucking around with stuff like Amanos Page, combination of different words and Stradivarius, yeah. Stradivarius was like what they Yeah. And I think it's a very original name, a very good yeah. idea. Yeah. And the Americans you always say Stradivarius. Right. In Finland we say Stratovarius. Oh, well, I'm not rolling my tongue like that. <laughs> That's not going to happen. <laughs> but it, anything works, you know, because the name is really cool. So, Stradivari is okay to say, Stradivari. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what you're going to get out of me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, were you, were you singing when you started, or um, was somebody else doing that? I was singing. I started singing already. I was in a boys' choir called Cantores Minores. Okay. Yeah, I was 10 already. I was singing in a big choir. We had like a black hoods stuff. Right? We sing in churches. Oh. Uh, yeah. So I was in very early, I was singing already. Mm. School so you, parties and things like that. So when you joined Stradivarius, you were singing too and, and guitar at the same time? I first last till I was, then he couldn't sing the stuff. I started to record a future shock. Oh, okay. Started, so then we switched and I started singing. You know? Yeah. Yeah, the first deal we got back in uh, 87 from CBS Finland. Right. We said like four track demo there, the Futures of which of Black Knight was there. Yeah. Uh, I wish I would have that, but I don't have it anymore. No, you don't have any of your old uh, demo stuff? I have fucking nothing. You know? I'm really? very bad with preserving stuff. Yeah. <laughs> some, I know that some guys are really like anal of preserving their stuff, and they're like really, really met meticulously. Yeah, oh, I can't everything, but I, I'm really not like that. Wow, I like to create new stuff always. It's like really what gives me the pleasure. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. Does anybody I, have your old demo stuff? I think some, you know, there's there exists a demo of fourth dimension where I do the vocals. What is what was that? Fourth dimension album. There is exists a demo where I do the vocals. Oh, really? Yeah, uh -huh, yeah, somebody has it for sure. Well, we're gonna have to find out. Yeah, <laughs> against the wind. I, everything's my vocal, so. Oh really? And then Timo came and we was actually switched in the middle of production. Yeah. He did the vocals. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it was yeah, a huge. Uh... Ninety-five. It was a year. Yeah. yeah. It was a huge change in there, but I don't want to go too far yet because I actually want to listen to the first album because it's been a while since I heard uh, Fright Night. 
Yeah. So, so when I listen to that, maybe uh, for next week, I'll uh, we'll okay. get into that a little bit more. Yeah, it's a, it's but, a um, we did it in four days in Feedwalk. <laughs> really, four days. Two days for the recordings and two days for the mix. And Hans La, La, uh, what was his name? Hans Raudi of CBS. He said, "Did you mix in the day?" Really? Yeah. Did you mix in the day? It was oh. two days. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Still, so vocal, that's fast. I, I did vocals like in six hours, man. Wow. But you probably had the songs down. You like you practiced. How I, long did you practice the songs for? We were re- very well practiced rehearsed yeah. for the end of the thing. So it, we didn't. But of course, you want to have more than four days, man. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Um, did uh, did everybody? Did you record it all live in the studio, or everybody did their own separate things? No, we did we did live. But then we we only kept the drums. And we replaced everything. So we, everything was done to a click track. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah, uh, 24 track Otari. Wow. And a two inch tape. Wow. Do you remember how much that cost to uh, record? That at that time was, I think, uh, we had still film marks. So it was like probably around um, like 100 euros a day. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Now film marks is 450 euros a day. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, 450. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's funny, but I, I get deals like maybe around three hundred a day because I'm I have been very good customer. They deals my name a lot, right? Yeah, because everybody's like from South America is uh, sending their stuff to Master to Mika Jussila to Finworks. Right, they yeah, have so that, service like this. Well, they should let you use it for free then. You're giving them publicity. <laughs> exactly, but you know it's a business and everybody of knows how to do their side. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so what, did you, were you guys, um, signed to a label when you recorded that album or were you just looking to be on a label? We were signed on CBS Finland. Oh, you were? So that's yes. okay. CBS, exactly. All right, cool. So they liked the demo and everything that you sent them? Yeah. They said that the vocals could be better. That's what <laughs> yeah. That I remember clearly. I had you, you recorded the demo all, that was all probably live too, right? The whole band? Yeah, it yeah. was. But the same way. Oh, you so did the, the same way with the click track and everything yeah, with the demo too? We just repeated the demo procedure. Oh, wow. Finworks, yeah. I'm going to have to hear the. I'm sure the demo may be on YouTube somewhere. Maybe it is. I'll have to look. It doesn't really sound, I think, it did not sound really different from the final result of Finworks. Oh, of course, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because it's a demo. You're not going to. It's a demo. Yeah. And at that at that point we didn't use any samples, so it's really live drums. Wow. Yeah, the snare and the kicks, everything's really like live. Uh, yeah. Acoustic drums. Yeah. Toms, cymbals, hi hat, snare, I ride. When did you start using samples on the drums? I think it was a Twilight Time album. Okay. Back, back in ninety two and I'm still using the same samples from uh Alice Alice's H R sixty B. It's like a black box. Mm. So I use always like monster kick and, and uh, tiled kick and 90s gate snare stuff. Wow, that must have been a bitch to do that back then. There's no computers and everything. No, there were. We had like Macintosh. Oh, really? Yeah, we had Cubase. So every, every oh, that was music. available back then? Yeah, it was. Oh, okay. Well, I had no idea. I was involved with music back then, so I didn't know what, what was out or what <laughs> wasn't. <laughs> exactly. All I did back then was just listen. Right, right. Yeah. All right. Well, um, we'll end this show, this episode for now. Okay. And then uh, I'll listen to Fright Night because I want to ask you some more questions about Fright Night. Okay, cool. All right. And then um, not next week, but maybe the week after, maybe we'll have some fans ask you some questions. Okay, cool. That's always fun. Yeah. We'll ask you. We'll stick with like the Fright Night, you know, the first. Okay. Uh, Album sure. questions and stuff like right. that. So, okay, cool. if any fans you know, stick, stay tuned for next week's episode because then we'll ask you guys to, uh, yeah. you know, uh, send us an email and ask us, uh, ask Timo, or Timo, Timo. One, one day I'll get it right. Timo, <laughs> we got this. I want to respell your name T E E M O. Yeah, T I M O. No, no, no. I want to spell T E E M O. Timo. Two, yeah, because yeah, no, that's man. how I'll pronounce it. <laughs> Timo, okay, whatever works, man. <laughs> South Americans, they usually say Timo. 
Like two M's. Yeah, see, now that's, yeah, it just... Timo uh, talk, yeah. <laughs> one, day, one day I'll get it. Yeah, no worries. Just say, you know, say Timo or whatever. You know what it is? Like, forever. I've always seen your name as Timo. So that's always yeah. how I've pronounced it. So right. for that's me to break right. out of that, it's, it's like impossible. It's like Michael Kiske, it, it, German say Michael. Yeah. Yeah. Michael yeah. Kiske, but he says Mike Kiske. Right, yeah. yeah. There was another weird one too, because it, it's Kiske. Yeah, it Kiske. Doesn't, it's not spelt like that. I don't know, it's weird. I know, know. yeah. Uh, Kiske is not the typical uh, German name. Yeah. yeah. Very not weird. like Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> that's an easy one to pronounce. That's very easy, yeah. Adolf Hitler. <laughs> Hey, uh, quick, before we leave, okay. uh, there was a thing on TV the other night, because I know last week we talked about Trump a little bit. Yeah. Now it looks like they're, they're getting to impeach him. What do you think about that? Yeah, I, um, I don't know, man. If like, it's, it's anyway, it's the president of the United States. <laughs> yeah. You know, maybe he did some bad stuff, but, you know, he's a very powerful guy. He's the most powerful guy in the world. Yeah. I think we should maybe let him do his stuff because he's a very, very clever business guy. Right, you know, and and economically we are basically fucked everybody here. So, yeah, pretty much. Mm-hmm. I think whatever whatever he did, he probably most likely you know he does things to keep us safe. Not that's you know, what I mean. He can, he can only do so much, but exactly, he's not he's not going to do something to you know get us in, in real bad trouble. He wants to get a deal to get things done. I think so too. I and, I, I don't think so. I mean, you can he might think a lot of things about this guy, but I think yeah. he, in the end he means well. Yeah, yeah, he might have did it the wrong way, but you know, there's there's always reasons why. Yeah, somebody's going to do the things they did, you know. Yeah, and I, I don't think that this impeachment thing will actually be valid in the end. I think they will back off. Yeah, I hope so because it's it's been since day one. Yeah, he's I been know. There, it's I know. trying to. They wasted so much time. It's so stupid. Yeah, it's stupid. It's really it stupid. stupid. I think. Yeah. Do you have these kind of problems uh, where you are? No, uh, no, no, no. We don't. No, our president is like. Well, he was just visiting Trump, and it was in the news that Trump was a little bit aggressive, and like this is a cool guy, I'm like tapping him, like you know, a very nice man, like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's how he is, you know. He's just like a a, a guy off the street, except he's. Uh, I think military. that's actually a very cool thing. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. I'd rather have that than some guy feeding feeding you bullshit, you know. Yeah, exactly. You know, just because they say fancy words doesn't mean you know they they are. Doing, you know, things for your best interest, you know. Right, right. I, I really feel this way. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I wanted to ask you that because I was watching news last night and I thought about you when I saw that. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah cool. okay. All right. So, thank you very much. Thank you, man. And we Call will see you place. guys. Yeah, we will see you guys next week. Okay. See you then. All right. Bye. Bye, bye, man. Bye.